film was meant to be a kind of experiential river that the viewer gets immersed in and taken to all these places around the world and witnessing all these existential interactions with water in places that they would never normally see. In terms of water, we assume that it's just there and it will be there and our governments are in charge of getting us fresh and drinkable water all the time. But what we wanted to do with this film was to kind of say, wait, wait a minute, let's think about what this large growing population of humans leaning on this finite resource is actually doing. Ed was asked by National Geographic to do a shoot on water in California. California has very complex water treaty access agreements because they have very little water of their own. So when Ed came back with those photographs, we looked at it and said, this is it, this is the subject. There's something so cinematic about water and the scope of it was totally daunting. Like, how do you make a film about water? <laughs> In 2006, I made a film about Ed's work. We followed him through China as he kind of documented photographically that Industrial Revolution. I went there searching for, well, what does that look like? How does that transplanted technology appear within China? Manufactured Landscapes was a good, I think, environment uh, for us all to work together. And then that became the collaboration on Watermark, where Ed was from the beginning, part of the filmmaking team. The story also unfolded into other places, into Mexico, and China to look at the, the largest fish farms in the world, India to see the Kumbh Mela Festival. We're following many of the things that I've established as a stills photographer, looking for interesting points of view, looking at the human systems on scale that are imposed upon that landscape. When you think of Bertinsky stills, they're incredibly high resolution. Prints are like five by seven, six by eight feet. And because of the resolution, you can be overwhelmed by the wide view, but then you can look in close and see unbelievable potential narrative threads and details. I worked with four by five formats back in the day of film and eight by 10. And now I've started working with a uh, Hasselblad with a 60 megapixel back. The richness of the aesthetic experience of this film was very much dependent upon the proper use of technology. We had a red Epic camera, a hand assembled prototype. It was so new, it hadn't even been released yet. And that shoots in 5K. So we had that as our main camera. When I went back to China, I wanted to bring some of the ideas uh, of, again, releasing myself from a fixed point perspective, that you know, I'm on the ground or I'm on a hilltop or I'm on a rooftop and, and that's the best I can do in China. You can't rent a Cessna, you can't rent a helicopter, you know, there is no solar aviation. It's all either military or commercial. And then I looked at all kinds of ways in which I might be able to do that. And at the end of the day, I thought, okay, there are now remote helicopters that can be assembled on location and they're strong enough to be able to put an Epic or a Hasselblad on them. So I can then be shooting from a thousand feet looking through my Hasselblad. It offered us an ability to do something that was not possible any other way. It's really difficult when you arrive in some of these environments that are so huge in scale and often the subject is just so vast it's really hard to find one way of comprehensively trying to tell that story. What ended up happening in production is that we kind of easily fell into these areas of strength so Ed would spend one whole day getting one shot and we would go off and find the workers coming home from their shift having dinner talking to them, finding people in little details. The whole film is a dialogue between scale and detail in some way, or particular and universal, or the big view, the, the tiny view. There's a tension 
that I feel when you visit a lot of these sites that represent really extreme environmental degradation or people who are under extreme water stress uh, in different parts of the world. As someone who wants to be an optimist and wants to find solutions to things, sometimes witnessing these places can really take the wind out of your sails. The Colorado River Delta, where we filmed from the air originally, and it was like a science fiction landscape. It was surreal. Miles and miles of white desert with these trees of the ocean coming up, trying to find the river, and the river isn't there. I was just looking at this place and thinking, my God, the extent to which we change things is pretty profound. This film is about allowing you to experience these places and if it opens up your consciousness to think about something that you might take for granted, turning on a tap, having a drink of water, you know, um, jumping in a lake, having a shower, all these things that we do here without thinking about it. If it changes your perspective on that a little bit, then it's, it's done something meaningful.